It's been one whole year since we got our TMG Pits Fridge 48. Would we buy it again? Let's talk about it. So the first thing I wanted to let you guys know is that we did receive our TMG Fridge 48 on February 18th, 2022. We've had it just over a year and in my opinion, it is still in immaculate shape. I'm not saying these things that we do keep it that way, but I did find a few ways to make cleanup easier and make sure that this thing stays looking beautiful. So the first thing that we noticed is those reverse flow plates get very, very dirty, especially if you're cooking a lot, which we typically do. And we found that putting foil over the reverse flow plates instead of just letting the grease hit those reverse flow plates on its own makes for a very easy cleanup. So if you guys look right here, we just did two competitions back to back weekends. And that is what this is from. There's a lot of sauce and a lot of stuff all over the foil. But if you see, I'm just rolling it up here and making for a very easy cleanup. And the second thing that we notice is that our stainless steel front shelf gets very, very dirty and it makes for kind of an annoying time when you're cooking a lot of meat. So a lot of the times what we do is we pop up at different locations, we sample off meats and our seasonings and we love showing off our TMG pit. But when we have a lot of food on the grate and we're pulling it out, we found that the grease will drip all over our front table. And that just makes for kind of an annoyance, right? So it's not the worst thing ever, but you are having to consistently clean just to make sure that there's not grease running all over. What I like to do is put some butcher paper over that, tape it down, and again, it makes for a very easy cleanup. It doesn't look as beautiful as that stainless steel front shelf does on its own, but I also don't think it looks bad at all whatsoever. And last but not least, I love to clean out the inside of my pit and the outside just to make sure that everything stays nice and clean. I know people talk about seasoning your pit and getting that nice buildup in there. I'm not about that at all whatsoever. We can have a debate at a different time, or actually, we won't even have the debate at all. I just like to keep my pits clean, and I always feel like if I can control the flavor on my pits, I definitely want to. So I make sure everything is clean and I get a nice consistent flavor every single time I cook. So we'll power wash the inside out, get it nice and clean. But on the outside, if you notice that your pit ever gets a little bit dry, that's where a good food grade mineral oil comes into play. You guys can get this on Amazon, literally just type in food grade mineral oil. That's where we got it. And we spray this down around every three to four cooks just to make sure that there's oil and it keeps this looking nice and beautiful. So it's very simple. I'm just gonna spray all over the front side of my pit. And you guys can see that it already gives it a nice, beautiful color. And if you look here at my butcher paper, it's getting dirty, but I don't have to clean off that stainless steel. So now I just wipe this in and you guys can see the colors changing. And again, I'm doing this every three to four cooks just to make sure that everything stays nice and oiled. Obviously it is a little bit slick. So if you want to put on some gloves or whatever, just to make sure it doesn't get all over your hands, that's completely cool. But Brandon and Hayes are the ones that suggested doing this. And I think that they really know their smokers very well because this has helped us maintain a nice and beautiful look all over our TMG. I also like to make sure I'm getting the insides of my pit. So just for the video, I'm not gonna clean the whole thing, or I'm sorry, I'm not gonna oil down the whole thing, but I typically do. And it's been literally about a minute and I've already got the front and the top. So this takes no time at all. If you do pick up one of these smokers, you wanna make sure that you're consistently doing this. Like I said, I do it every three or four cooks. The second thing we wanna talk about is fire management. How does this smoker run? And I can honestly say that this is easily the most efficient offset smoker that I've ever had. Now, this is only my third one, and the others that I had were not specialty offset smokers like this, where I had a custom builder, but this is just truly an amazing smoker. Now, the way I like to start my fire is with a full bag of lump charcoal. I'm sorry, not a full bag, but a full basket of lump charcoal. So I have the fire management basket and I'll fill that all the way up. And then I'm gonna use my sous vide gun, my torch, in order to get the lump nice and hot. Once it's fully lit, that's when I start adding my logs that are around this size right here. From here, I'm going to put two crisscross right on top of each other. So it's like the Lincoln log, that's what they call it. And I'm starting with four, and I know for a fact that that's going to get me right between 250 and 275 degrees. And if you guys have a fridge like me, or if you have any of the other TMG smokers or a completely different offset, you're just going to have to learn your smoker. So one of the best things that I saw on the TMG Facebook group 
was somebody that was having issues getting their fridge up to temp. And in the beginning, so was I. I think it was Brandon or Hayes. I can't remember which of them said something, but they basically said that, hey, look, this is a 1,200 pound solid piece of metal and it has to go through the reverse flow plates and this is a big smoker. So you have to build a big fire. So that's exactly why I'm starting my fire with lump charcoal, getting it nice and hot. So I'm thinking that lump is my heat and wood is my flavor. So obviously the wood's also gonna let off some heat, but I'm getting a lot of my heat from that lump charcoal. Once everything dies down and I start getting coals in there, it stays nice and hot and I can still rock it around 225 degrees, even with no wood, even if it's completely burnt. So one of the things, and it's not very many things that I would change on this smoker, but one of the things that I would have done differently if I was ordering this TMG fridge today is I would have gotten an insulated firebox. And that's not because it doesn't run efficiently, but it's because it runs so hot. You have to be very, very careful with the fridge that I have. I have that griddle top and I can honestly say I've used it less than five times. In the very beginning, I thought it was gonna be really cool and something that I really would like, but I have to be completely honest with you guys. I don't like that feature at all and I would get an insulated firebox. Now, in order to maintain my fire, I'm using about two logs every 45 minutes to an hour. It really just depends on the day. So a lot of times here in Texas, it's hot and humid and sometimes my pit will run a little bit longer when it is hot and humid. Today, it's around 60 degrees, so I might need to add them closer to the 45 minute mark, but that's the soonest that I found I need to add more wood. So the next and maybe the most important thing is how does this smoker cook? So right now we currently have some baby back ribs and some beef ribs on there. We are gonna throw some chicken on there and I do wanna talk about how we set things up, how we place specific meats on here, and then just a few of the things that we've been doing recently with the smoker. So I mentioned our baby backs and our beef ribs. You can see those are rocking and rolling. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to be putting some leg quarters on here. So one of the things that you'll notice is so far, I'm putting legs over here on the right and I have my ribs over here on the left. I have my beef ribs right towards the middle and realistically, what I've noticed is the hottest spots on this smoker are all the way to the right and all the way to the left. The reason it's hot over to the left is because this is a reverse flow smoker. So the smoke is traveling under these plates coming out right here and then of course the smoke is dispersing and coming right out of the stack that starts right here in the middle. So the smoke is coming over here to the right side that's why it's hot over here, and then also when it comes out of the reverse flow plates, that's why it's hot on this side. So I'm not sure if you guys can hear it in the camera, but we are getting just a little bit of sizzle when we're putting this chicken down here. And that's because, like I said, over here on the right side, it is definitely a little bit hotter than it is anywhere else. And the way I've been cooking my competition briskets is, I've been putting it right here on the right side, closest to where all the smoke is traveling out. I'm getting a nice hot cook on my brisket. We recently hit a first place brisket. I'll put a picture right here so you guys can see that, but we've been consistently cooking on this thing. Now, one of the things you'll notice is I don't have two of the racks in here. So this exact rack right here, there are three of them, but whenever I know that I'm not cooking that much meat, I really just like using this middle rack because again, of where all the smoke is traveling out. So. It's hot, I don't wanna to touch anything, but you guys can kind of get an idea of why I'm cooking the way I'm cooking and exactly how this smoker's been running. So now that we have everything on the pit, you can kind of get an idea of how I'm cooking and why I'm putting specific meats in specific areas. I like cooking my ribs a little hotter and faster and the same with the brisket. We're gonna start cooking competition pork butts coming soon. So we're really gonna try dialing it in. We're gonna try seeing exactly how it cooks best on our TMG offset. So I think that that's the thing I would recommend to you guys. If you get one of these or if you get any offset, just play around with it. See where your hot spots are, figure out your pit. That's the biggest thing. It took a little bit of time, but we finally have this thing dialed in to where I feel very comfortable with it every single time we cook. So the biggest question is, would we buy the TMG Fridge 48 again? And my answer every single day of the week is going to be yes. It cooks so efficiently, it looks so beautiful, and I really don't have any complaints with this smoker other than I really wish I would have gotten that insulated firebox. So don't forget we cooked a bunch of stuff on the pit today. We put it in different locations based off of how we needed it to cook. We're gonna show you the finished product and then I'm gonna go inside and eat with the family. 
If you guys are interested in getting one of these TMG pits, this is not a sponsored video. I paid for the TMG on my own, but I'll put some stuff in the description so you guys can reach out to them directly. I really do think they make some quality, quality pits. This is not gonna be the only offset that I get. I'm already eyeing something different. I'm thinking maybe an Outlaw, maybe a Jambo. Drop a comment down below. What would you get if you were getting a brand new offset smoker? As always, we really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.